Hey everybody, welcome back to Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com and here on my YouTube channel and in this video we have come to the end of the mix that we've been working on for the last six or seven videos and now I'm going to show you at the end of the mix how you print your final mix back into the DAW for export as well as the stems, the group channels, how we print those back in and kind of how that's set up. But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video and you dig hybrid mixing and you want to watch a fool like me set up an analog, a hybrid studio and fumble around through and bring it all to you live to hopefully share with you my experience of setting up such a workflow, if you like that kind of stuff, then hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell because I'll be putting out a lot more comic relief videos for you so you can see how we fumble through this, but we're having a ton of fun. And so far you guys have uh, really been digging all the videos and you find it super informative and I'm really happy about that. So I welcome you to our family here. Please subscribe and support the cause. There's nobody else on YouTube showing you how to set up a workflow like this from the time that the equipment gets delivered all the way through the install and then how the heck do you use this thing? So I'm glad you're all here. Hit that subscribe button. So let's head on over here. So, okay. First thing we want to do is we want to go into our DAW Studio One and I want to show you how I have this kind of set up. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to record the mix back into Studio One. So the way I have this set up here in Studio One is we're going to print um, several things. We're going to print the stereo mix, the final mix after it's been processed through the SSL and all the hardware. We're going to call that our print track. Okay, our two track stereo mix. And then we're also going to print our group channels. The way we have this board set up is we have our eight stereo groups that we're going to print as well, our stems, right? For drums, percussion, bass, guitar one and two, keys, lead vocals, and background vocals. Now, in addition to that, with the origin, you can actually print every single track if you wanted to. There's direct outs on the board to print all 32 tracks. As a matter of fact, you could print 64 tracks. If 64 faders between small and large faders, you could print all the audio tracks on the first 32 channels, and I can print all the effects on the eight, the eight or the 16 stereo returns here as well if you wanted to. We don't have it wired that way or set up that way. I guess you could in the future. I, right, for now, I don't, I don't see the need to do that. The print track and the stems should be good enough. But just keep in mind that you can print everything back into the DAW and you can do it all simultaneously in one pass. So you don't need to print the print track and then print the kick and print the snare and print the toms. You can do it all in one pass, which could be very, very handy. The other reason why you may want to do something like that, you can consider it. And we'll do more videos on this in the future as well, is you can process everything through your SSL and through all your hardware and print all the individual tracks back into the DAW. Then you can actually mix with the faders in the DAW. There is a 0 dB button on both the short and the long fader here. And what the 0 dB button does is it takes the fader out of the circuit. So if you're someone who doesn't want to use the faders because you're worried about recall and those sorts of things, you can just use the desk as a big summing mixer, hit 0 dB on the faders. It takes the fader out of the circuit and you can mix with the faders in the DAW and print all your process tracks back in then what that means is if you have to recall your session, all your fader positions in your DAW are obviously recallable, and then all of the audio tracks that you printed back in are all your process tracks. So again, there's several ways to do this. What I love about the SSL Origin, and typically SSL consoles in general, even back in the 80s, the 4000 and all of those, is that the routing possibilities and what you can do is really endless. You can do almost anything you want. So more about that in other videos. Just wanted to make you aware of that. You can do that. But, but what we're going to do is we're just going to print back the stereo mix in the group channels and that's it, the stems. So here in Studio One, I've created a bunch of stereo tracks here. So step one is I created a bunch of stereo tracks. You can see them down here in red. I put them in a folder here. I do this as part of my mix prep at the beginning of every session, which I'll show you another video if there's not already one on this channel on how I do that. But I'm creating a stereo channel for print, drum stem, percussion, bass, guitar one, guitar two, keyboards, lead vocals, background vocals. Okay, those are all stereo audio tracks. Okay, in Studio One, if I come down to the console view and click on the inputs button, you'll see all of those right here. Here's all of that here. And all of that is created in our I.O. template. Let me show you that now. And every DAW will be similar. If we come to Studio One and we go to Preferences, 
and we go to our song setup. And here we are in the inputs tab. If you see all of, all of our inputs, we have our, our print track on, chan on line three and line four on one of my Apollos. Drums, percussion, bass, all of our stems are on the second Apollo. We have three Apollo 16s in the rig. We're, we're running all of the group channels on the second unit on channels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, because the X16 is 16 in and 16 out. The reason why I put all of the stems on the second Apollo and not the first one where the print track is on 3, 4 is because you only have 16 in and 16 out. If we take our 16 mono or our eight stereo stems plus the print track, that's 18 stereo pairs, right? So if I were to put the print track on 3, 4 and then started building my stems across the first one, then I would run out of space on the first unit and the second unit would only have one pair. It doesn't really matter. I hope that makes sense. But just to keep it in mind, because I'm a simple man, to keep it simple and straight in my mind, I figured let me put all the stems on one of the Apollos. Let me put the print track on the other Apollo. And now I have still a third Apollo that I could print another 16 back in if we wanted to use some of those direct uh, outputs that we talked about earlier. Now also keep in mind that if you're gonna try to print everything, the stereo track, all your group channels, right? We talked about 16, that's 18 inputs. If I were to try to print now all 32 individual um, audio channels, right? That's 18 and 32, that's 42, that's what? That's 50 inputs you would need. And then if I wanna print the other 16 stereo or 16 mono effect returns, that's what, 60, 50, that's 64. So if I wanted to print the entire desk the way I have it laid out, all the direct audio channels, the group channels, the print track, and all the stereo returns, I would need 64 inputs on my audio interfaces. I have three Apollos, 16 times three, right? That's 32, 42, that's 50. I would need another Apollo 16. I would need a fourth one. That would give me enough inputs to print everything. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Anyhow, that's how it's set up in Studio One. We have all of our stems here. Okay, so I have all my inputs here. I create all my stereo audio tracks and I make sure that those stereo tracks, you may to make sure down here in red, that each one of those tracks has the correct input. So the first one, the print track, drum stem, percussion. See that all the way down, okay? So then I just go ahead and I arm all my tracks here. I start at the beginning of the song and I just play it back in real time. You obviously have to run the song from top to bottom so it runs through all the hardware and the mix will be printed as well as all of the stems. Let me show you what that looks like. Here we go. Okay, so that's how you print it back in. Now, one thing you gotta keep in mind, and I did this off camera, when you get towards the end of the mix, see how I have the inputs open? We're not clipping any of the um, any of the converters coming back in. We wanna make sure of that. We're not clipping our print track. We're not cl clipping any of our groups. All right, you wanna do the same thing on the output when you're first setting up your mix. And again, we'll talk about that in another video. You wanna make sure that on the output side, you're not clipping any of your um, 
any of your converters, right? That just makes sense, okay? So now that we've done that, now if we want to listen back to that, let me just take these all out of record mode here. So the print track, now I got to go from on the origin, I have to go from the, from the mix that we were listening to back and listen to the DAW, because now this is all being routed out the main outputs, right? So now I'm going to listen to the print track. If I were to just solo this up, here's the print track. Okay, there's the print track, and now if I want to solo up and listen to the drums on their own, I can do that. someone I'm reaching out for can you hear me? okay so you can solo up each one of the individual stems are all isolated as as you can hear there so now I have now I always create the same because my group channels always laid out the same most of the time so in this particular song there is no percussion in this song so we didn't even use the percussion group we recorded it anyway, so I could just, you know, come in here and I could just delete that. Oops, sorry, don't want to do that. Got to highlight only one of them, right, Dave? There we go. We could delete that. Same thing, um, you know, when we get to, uh, you know, guitar one, guitar, if we have a certain guitar that we're not, uh, we're not, we don't have, or a group that we don't have, we can always delete it. So it's pretty straightforward to do that. So that's pretty much how you do it. It's pretty straightforward. You just print it in from top to bottom and then you can export that out of your DAW. You would solo up each one of your recorded stems and you can export that one at a time. And now you have a stem pack plus you have your print track. So that's just one way to do it. That's the quickest way to do it. That's kind of how I'm going to work for now. Maybe in the future I'll print out more stuff and we'll do more things. But for now, if you typically have the stems on the print track, you're usually in pretty good shape and that's how you do it. It is really that simple. The key is make sure that you're not clipping your converters on the way back in. You want to make sure that you're not hitting the clip light and just make sure you do things kind of conservatively. You can always turn it up later. You could always even put a limiter on the master bus at the end before you export them if you want to get the volume up or however you want to do it. Um, so you won't have to worry about any kind of digital clipping. So I want to thank you so much for joining for joining me for this video. Leave some comments below. Let me know if you have any other questions about direct printing and print tracks or stem printing or anything like that. Let me know uh, if you have any questions around this topic. I'm going to do some more videos where we'll get in a little more detail down the road. But if you have any questions that you want to know answers to, leave comments below and let me know. And I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So thank you so much for joining me. Once again, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. It really does help. We're a brand new channel. We're growing every single day. I really do appreciate all your support and all your encouragement. And if uh, anything that you want to know, just let me know. And until the next video, I've been Dave with Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com. I'll see you guys very soon. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.